Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a wonderful day. In today's video, I'm going to look at a company that we've never looked at before in this channel and the request came, came from one of the brothers so i want to make sure that we go over the company they basically read about their financial details and then of course as always do your research find out a bit more information about the company if you are really interested in this company this company was never on my radar because i do think they have high level of debt and because for that reason they were not sure they are complying for a very long time now they are so again the debt levels is slightly high so I'm going to go over the financials and again if you're interested of course do your due diligence before you actually buy this company. What I would like you to do right now is if you could um, like the video that will be really helpful. It doesn't cost you a penny and of course it definitely helps the channel. As well as that you can join us in the Patreon account where we have a um, loads of di different things that we can offer to you Sharia compliant investing ebook we've got the ETF trackers we've got stock work uh, watch list we got dividend calendars and dividend trackers and so on and then top of that we have the access to the discord where brothers and sis sisters are sharing actually good practice of what they're doing with their investments and so on the company I want to talk about today is the Caterpillar. This is the company that we, you, um, you guys have asked me to look at recently. A year to date basically is down up, is up about 3%. It has a PE right now of 12. Um, and if we look at the financials first and then I'll come back to. So of course this company is one of the industrial companies. It's been around for a very long time. I'm sure you've seen this sign everywhere where there is a construction and it has come down quite a bit. So if we look at, in fact, if we look at this last six months, it's up about 15% for the one year is about just one six percent up. But as you can see around 20th uh, September of this year up until now is actually down quite a bit. So one month is actually not bad. Okay, that's really interesting. But from... $288 per share to right now 247 in the last basically since August or September. So yeah, it's down a little bit. Let's have a look at the financials of this company. Like I said, it's industrial sector. Currently has um, $247 per share in terms of uh, the stock price. EPS is $17.65. Market cap of $129 billion. It has a wide economic mode and beta is slightly above one. The PE right now is about 14 and the forward PE is about 12.3. Um, Let me see that was the case. Yep, so that's about um, 12 um, right now. When you look at the sector, it's about 22 and the S&P 500 is about 25. So it seems very cheap when you look at that. And the five-year average it was 18. So it's way cheaper than where it was in the last five years. And the price to free cash flow right now is about 16, which is basically still lower than where it was where it is now so the dividend yield is two percent the payout ratio is 25 percent latest increases it was 8.3 percent and the five-year growth rate of nine percent now the dividend strict is based 29 years so that means this company is a dividend aristocrat the annual payout we're looking about five dollars and twenty cents now at dividend safety is 93 percent free cash flow of almost a nine billion dollars and free cash flow yield of about 7% and free cash flow margin of 13%, which is absolutely amazing. So in terms of dividend side of things and free cash flow here, it actually looks really good. Now, profit margin is about 14%, operating margin of 20% and return on, on equity of all fifth, over 50%, which is really huge. And in the last 10 years, they've actually returned about 13%. Now, this doesn't mean in the next 10 years, the company is going to do the same thing. But it kind of gives us an idea. So return on invested capital is about 20%. And the five-year growth rate in terms of annual component, component annual growth rate in terms of revenue is about 6%. Current ratio is way above one, which is quite nice. So that means they have enough liquid assets they can liquidate in the next 12 months if they need to pay off any liabilities. Next year, they're expecting the earnings to grow, but basically to decline about less than one percent and then the growth estimates for the next five years per annum so that's every single year is about 10 percent so this is kind of steady eddy company so if you can get 10 percent in growth of every single year that's absolutely huge now according to uh, morningstar it's fairly valued at the moment 229 dollars per share is where they think the price should be so it's slightly higher than that right now according to simply wall street it's actually 20 almost 30 percent overvalued they're saying the price should be 209 195 dollars per share 
Now, according to tip rank and seeking alpha, more or less the same. So, but tip rank actually thinks this is about 10% upside from where it is and is a moderate buy. And seeking alpha is about 5% upside from where it is right now, $266 per share, and it's actually hold from them. Now, in terms of Sharia compliance side of things, as you can see here, business side of it is absolutely fine. Interest bearing debt is about 26, 27% right now. Okay, so that can easily go into the 30s. So that's why I said at the beginning, they have a high level of debt. So you have to be careful with this company. And interest bearing securities was about 5%, less than 5%. Now they're buying back their own shares, which is quite nice. Okay, so every year since 2013, they have been buying back their own shares apart from 2017, 2018, more or less bought every single year, they actually bought back their own shares. On top of that, they actually pay you 2% in dividends. So I really like that when these type of companies, because they are not growth companies, they actually giving you value back and to the shareholders based on the dividends, based on the um, buy back, um, buying back their own shares. The reason I like this is because Remember these companies, like the, if you have a one share of this company and it actually buys more of those shares, what happens is your share is now worth more than it was before. And that's very, very important to us, okay, as in long-term investors. Now, let's have a look at Seeking Alpha. Let's go to the earnings, for example, moving forward to have a kind of look. So about almost 50% and then there's a bit of a decline there in terms of revenue, in terms of EPS. And then remember the information that I shared with you guys here comes from Yahoo Finance, which is again using the analyst there. So again, 13% um, growth and then about 1% and then about 3%. So on average, that's what you saw on that um, platform there. Now, in if we look go, if we look at the graphs here, okay, as you can see from almost to 50 uh, 59 billion dollars just over 59 billion dollars to 67 billion dollars expected in 2023 december this year and then after that uh, 68 billion so 59 to 67 billion to 68 billion so this is actually headed the right direction and when we look at the annualized eps and we take out the estimates you can see there was a decline in 2020 because of the lockdown and everything and it, since then it's actually grown quite a bit and if we include that the estimates is also the head in the right direction so they expected the earnings to grow and eps to grow um up quite a bit from almost what is it now the actual is 13 dollars and 84 cents to 20 and a half to 20.6 so it's again a little bit of growth there so overall it doesn't really look bad at all to me one of the things that i've noticed about this company as well is the business is very cyclical so 2013 they had 52.6 billion dollars of free earn of uh, revenue okay then 52.1 then 44 in 2015 then 35 then 42 51 50. i don't know what happened here maybe they made a sell maybe they split they did something of, of course they have to because the revenue cannot decline from 52 billion to 35 billion dollars within a space of two years so something has gone wrong there and then 51 billion to 50 billion to 39 again because of covid and then it bounced back to 48 56 billion dollars 63 billion dollars so it's a quite cyclical business when you look at that and of course, it will be so the um, the cost of the revenue is also quite high because 43 billion, they're making 55 billion dollars by spending about 43 billion of that. Right now in 2020 and trailing 12 months, we're looking at total revenue of 66 billion dollars, right? 46 billion of that actually goes straight into the company because that's the cost of that revenue. And the gross profit is just basically 20 billion dollars. Then, of course, then you just need to look at the free cash flow. Um, I'll show you in a second. So how much of that actually becomes a net income? OK, so the net income has actually declined for basically last a couple of years. And right now for the trailing 12 months here, OK, we're looking at basically minus 20, um, 25. So that does not look good at all to me. Um, looking at the free cash flow. Looking at the free cash flow right now. Actually, free cash flow hasn't been bad, but it actually declined from $3.5 billion to right now $1.6 billion. 
right my bad i made a mistake i was looking at the different ticker i was like why is this company so bad all of a sudden no it was wrong i think i was looking at amd now six billion to two let's about three billion dollars six and a half so right now we're looking at about nine billion dollars so that's actually better the net income is actually way way better than what i was looking at a couple of seconds ago that was amd that was not caterpillar apologies and here is the um free cash flow from four billion dollars to eight point six billion dollars which is basically what we've seen here so yeah apologies for that but yeah it's it's not basically bad company at all it's actually got good things going on and it's one of those very well-known companies in terms of constructions and the basic equipment that they have um the only thing i would be worried about is basically the level of debt i think we can check the level of debt here and on seeking alpha you can see and you can do the calculation as well if you wanted to um you can find if you keep scrolling down what you will find is the wait wait let me go back up i'll show you where that is there you go where is it there we go so you got the market cap and then you got the lot of total debt so the total debt right now about 35 37 billion dollars if you divide this by this and times by 100 of course you get the percentage i think it's about 28 percent right now in fact it's about 29 percent because the market cap of course maybe has come down quite a bit in the last few weeks according to soy is about 26 percent but of course soy checks it once every quarter but right now it's about 29 percent so whoever asked that question i would be very careful because you might get into because these type of companies they have a lot of debt anything can happen it's straight away it can change i used to own stan uh, stanley black and decker and the same thing happened the market cap went down of course i can use for the last 24 months or 36 months in terms of the market cap but i just would don't like companies that have a very level very high level of debt and maybe one or two is okay but more than that of course in your portfolio that would be a bit scary right this that's the company that i wanted to share with you guys i hope you enjoyed the video as always if you like the uh, channel if you like the you know the videos that you're watching and you're getting any values out of the things that i'm doing here please like the video subscribe to the channel join us on the patreon to support the channel inshallah have a wonderful wonderful day assalamu alaikum